All right. So we're doing lesson two, three, two, tensile testing, questions five, six, and seven. Uh, this is who is here in the class today. Let's go ahead and share my screen. Uh, I'm going to present my entire screen. And let's get started, okay? So if you guys wouldn't mind if I ask questions, just feel free to jump in and uh, and uh, ask uh, or answer them if you can. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, okay. Uh, let me go here. All right, so here we go. Question number five. Um, modulus of elasticity, okay? So you can see down here I have my material, which is aluminum. You guys can see that, right? Yes? I can't see you, so someone say yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have the modulus of elasticity. Uh, we have the form, uh, the formula down here. It looks like a big, scary formula, but it's not that bad, I promise you. Um, so let's go ahead and read it. It says, a measure of the material's ability to regain its original uh, dimensions after the removal of a load of force. So modulus of elasticity is definitely before it reaches the yield point. It's this straight line. Um, and it says the modulus is the slope. Okay, so we need the slope. You guys remember slope from math? It's rise over run, right? So in order to do that, we just need any two points on the, the line to get us a slope, okay? Uh, and that's why it says force two and force one. Force two is one point, uh, pro preferably the bigger point, and then force one is any point that goes before that that, well, it's still a straight line. And then um, this little um, symbol right here, which is when I get my formula sheet out, I'll tell you what it is, the delta symbol. The delta symbol stands for the deformation of elongation at the uh, force number two, and then deformation at force number one. Okay, so how much it's deformed. Uh, L means the length, the original length, and A, of course, means area. Okay, so with that, we're going to go ahead and get started on this problem. Remember, this is the aluminum one. You guys are going to be doing the, um, the uh, copper one. Okay, so with this, we have our formula here. Um, the first thing we need to remember is that 1 kilonewton equals uh, 224.809 pounds, okay? Because we're going to be able to, we're going to have to convert that again. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the modulus elasticity equals force 2, okay? So you see right here, we're on this one right here, force 2. Uh, so force 2... Uh, let's make that the yield point right here. Uh, same thing we did last time. Uh, so it's right where the 20 is for the load. So the force is 20 uh, kilograms. Uh, but of course, we don't want it in kilograms. We want it in pounds because we want to keep PSI. Does anyone remember what 20 kilograms in PS and, uh, pounds was? Kilonewtons, thank you. What, what am I saying? Sorry, kilonewtons, thank you. And remember what number that was? You could look back on your notes. I believe it was the answer to question number one and question number two. Oh, oh, that's right. All right, cool. All right, so it was uh, four thousand. Uh, okay, check this out. You no, I'm gonna do it right. I was going to round because they're such big numbers, but no, you know what? We're going to do it the right way. Uh, so it was 4,496.18 pounds. And then we're going to subtract that from the first, uh, from a, another force, force one. So here's the tricky part, okay? So we need to find another spot in this line to count as force uh, one, and we're going to have to stick to that force. All right, so uh, what I did was, since it was so easy, you can tell these columns going down. See how the 20 is right on that third line, or the second line, excuse me? I just went ahead and found where it intersected with the first line, right here, okay? So it intersected with that first line uh, column going down, and I know that that is half of a millimeter, so 0.5 millimeters. Okay, and it looks like the load is 12. So here's the thing, I'm gonna write it over here. The load at that point at force one, 
is 12 kilonewtons, and it's also at 0.5 millimeters, okay? So that's my first force that I identified. My second force I already knew from the last one, okay? It was 20 kilonewtons and one uh, millimeter. So let's go ahead and convert that, okay? So 12 kilonewtons, let's go ahead and get the calculator out. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply 12 times 224.809 because I'm turning kilonewtons into pounds. And I get 2,697.708. So that's what I'm gonna use right here. 2,697.708 pounds. Okay, and then we're gonna multiply that by L subscript O. Does anyone remember what L subscript L, L subscript zero means? Oh, it's not a zero, it's an O, sorry, excuse me. What do you think L stands for, guys? Length and O? So O would stand for? Original, very good. So it's the original length before you um, stretched out. So if you look back on before number one, it gives you the original length and it was 2.95 inches. And that's in the description before you start problem number one. Okay, that's given to you already. Okay, awesome. So that's my top half. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line uh, for uh, the uh, now the bottom half, okay? So remember, my force right here, this is my force two, and it was at 20 kilonewtons, but it's this number converted. So now I'm gonna go ahead and find the um, deformation at 20 kilonewtons. So if you look carefully right here, I know it's a little small, but if you look carefully at 20 kilonewtons, the deformation is at one millimeter, okay? Does anyone know what one millimeter is in inches? All right, I'm pretty sure you guys can all Google things, so I'll just Google it for you, okay? Because Point what? Point, it should be point zero three nine. Yeah? So um, I am gonna round this one. I know I'm not supposed to, but it's just gonna be so much easier for me. So I'm just gonna round it, it's such a tiny number. So I'm gonna put point zero four uh, inches minus my second load. So, uh, or sorry, my second um, uh, deformation which is at force one. And remember, I picked this one right on that line, so I knew it'd be half of a millimeter. So if one millimeter is 0 0.04 inches, how much is half of a millimeter? Point zero 0.02 inches, very good. Okay, and once again, guys, you can just simply convert that really easily using Google, uh, no issues, okay? All right. Um, does any have any does anyone have any questions on how I got these? Remember, my load is this part right here, going that way, and then the same uh, the uh, excuse me the deformation is this part coming down. That's where I got those numbers. So that's where I got the twelve that I converted, and here's where I got the point five. All right, let me just erase that because it's gonna be bad. Okay, so then I'm gonna go to multiply that by the area. Does anyone remember the area? Well, the area was the same area we used last time. So if you guys don't remember, it was 0 0.0314 squared. Now, here's a part that'll really kind of trip you out if you're not careful. Um, you really, oh sorry, that's inches squared, not cheeseburgers. All right. You don't want to square that point zero three one four. You don't want to square it because remember the modulus elasticity should be in psi. Psi stands for pounds over square inch. If you square it, if you distribute the square, it is no longer pounds over square inches. Does that make sense? So we're going to keep that square there. Um, as a matter of fact, you'll notice um, that we're actually going to add to it, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Okay. So that's pretty much me setting up the problem here. Now all I have to do is solve it, and it's pretty easy from this point. It's pretty self-explanatory. But does anyone have any questions on how I got that got here so far? All 
All right, no questions. Sorry about the mess, guys. Like I said, I'm using this writing tablet that I'm not used to, and it just looks really sloppy. Okay, let's go ahead and do some math, guys. Here we go. Um, let me get my number pad out. So let's go ahead and start from the top. I got 4496.18 minus 2697.708. That's going to give me 1,798. So 1,798. Point four seven two uh, it, pounds times two point nine five inches. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this part too. Might as well. Why well, have this up? All right, times two point nine five, and that's what I get right there. Five three oh five. So I got five thousand three hundred. In five point four nine two four. What's my uh? What's my units? Pounds, inches. Very good. And that's really important. Okay. All right. So my uh, top part is done. Of this problem is done. Now I just need to do the bottom part. The bottom part is pretty easy. Uh, let's just multiply, okay? Or uh, first we're going to subtract, but it's pretty easy. 0 0.04 minus 0 0.02 is 0 0.02. So I got uh, 0 0.02 inches times 0 0.0314 inches squared, okay? So here we go. I got, let me do my the numbers first. I got 0 0.02 times 0 0.0314, and I get... Uh, is this rounding? Hmm, okay. I, yeah, it is rounding, huh? I got a different answer when I did it on a different calculator, but I'll go ahead and put my answer I got on my different calculator. I got, uh, 0,0,0,6,2,8. Okay? So I'm giving my units here. Very good. Inches cubed. Remember, if you're multiplying inches, uh, 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 exponents, you add them together. This is a 1, because by itself, that's a 2. It's inches cubed. The reason that's important, because right here, that's how we get rid of the inches on top. We're going to cancel out one of these, go ahead to 2, and cancel out this one. Does that make sense? So now we have pounds over inches squared, or PSI. So that's why we kept that square there. Okay? All right, so now all is left to do is to go ahead and finish this problem up by dividing it, and you should get a very big number. Remember, we're talking about the uh, metal. We're talking about the force it takes uh, to bend metal, to uh, stress it out, to break it, and there's a reason we use machines for it, and we can't do it by hand, okay? So here we go, 5305.4924. Divided by 0 0.000628, and I get 8 point, let's round, because we're at the answer, 8.5 million, okay? 8.5 million PSI. If you guys remember and did any of the PSI problems for uh, 232, uh, the first half, you'll notice that all the PSIs are pretty much in the millions, or almost close to it. All right, guys, that's the first problem. So is there any questions anyone has on uh, this part? No questions? Jimmy, good to see you. Oh, yeah, we didn't never get to see Jimmy. Hello there. All right, cool, let's move on then. Here we go. Uh, does that make sense, guys? And no one has any questions about anything? All right, you're gonna follow the the. You're gonna follow the same format just for the copper. Remember, the tricky part is knowing where to put your first you, your second force because remember it should be the biggest minus the smallest. Your second force should be the one you used for the last uh, problems, last set of problems. But then you need to come up with another point on the straight line. And theoretically, it doesn't matter where you picked it. If you would have put it right here, fifteen. I put mine at twelve right here. If you would have used 15, this is a straight line. It's going in um, in a predictable manner. So it, yeah, and it's it's uh, what it proportional. 
It's proportional. So if you would have used 15, your um, your extension would have been um, longer too. You technically would have got the same answer. Okay, it really doesn't matter which one, um, where you use it. Um, so I just used 12 because like I said, it was right on the line right there, intersected. And to me, that's important. All right, let's go ahead and move on. So 8.5 million PSI, that was for the answer for number five. Uh, you're gonna do your number five, don't put 8.5 million because that's not the answer for copper. All right, here we go. So we went from modulus of elasticity, now we're gonna do modulus of resistance. You can see we have our little formula right here. Uh, so it looks like it's using UR as the modulus of resistance. And it says right here, a measure of the material's ability to absorb energy up to the yield point. This modulus is represented by the area under the stress versus strain curve uh, from the zero force uh, to the unit. All right, so it's going from the bottom to the this, and it's going to be this area that's right here. Okay, and I think you saw that in the slideshow. Um, so if I draw a line going straight down right here, that's not straight, but you get the point. The modulus of uh, resistance is all this right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve for that, okay? Uh, so let's get started. Uh, we got uh, UR equals half. That's easy. Piece of cake there. Um, multiplied by this little symbol. So that symbol is a sigma. And that sigma stands for stress, okay? So, this, uh, does everyone see that it's um, stress and then there's a YP below it? So it's the stress at the, yield point, very good. All right, so the stress at the yield point. So we already, uh, we already did that in another problem um, in I think number one, no, number two uh, was the stress at the yield point. So the stress of the yield point, if you guys look back on your notes, your assignment, uh, or actually at, uh, at mine, because you didn't do that when you did for copper, mine was 143,000 pounds. Okay, so that was the stress there. All right, so I got that. Piece of cake. Now I'm looking for this little symbol, and that is the uh, epsilon symbol. And epsilon stands for normal strain, okay? You're looking for the normal strain on the yield point. So in other words, you're looking for the, the strain, okay? So how do we find strain? If you look at your formula sheet, you'll notice that you find strain. I'm gonna go ahead and do it down here. Strain, you can find it by uh, using the delta, this little symbol right there. Well, that looks pretty bad, but still. The delta, uh, ooh, actually it's more like this. Sorry guys, let me draw this right so people don't think that's a six. It went like this, there you go. Uh, the delta over the original length, okay? And that is at the yield point, okay? Because it's, uh, it says right here um, on the formula. It says uh, normal strain at the yield point. All right, so we want the uh, total deformation at the yield point. So the yield point was right here, remember? So the deformation, if we look, if we draw a line straight down, the deformation is at one millimeter. But in inches, how much is that? Zero point zero four inches over the original length, which we already used in the last one, which was. Uh, 2.95, I believe, yep, 95 inches. And that's gonna give me um, the normal strain at the yield point. I should probably write that down here, YP, yield point. All right, so let's go ahead and do some math. Use a calculator. Uh, 0 0.04 divided by 2.95, and that's what I get, 0 0.0136. Uh, six. So I'm gonna multiply it by 0 0.0136 inches, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, and right here I could just divide it by 2 or multiply by 0.5 either way. So here I go. Anyone have any questions so far about how I got these two? 
the four one uh, one hundred forty three thousand I got because it's the um, it's the uh, stress at the yield point, which I got from problem number two, which I solved for in problem number two. And then um, this one, I actually just did the stress um, normal strain at the yield point, which is a formula you find in your formula sheet, but it's it's uh, it's all written right here. All right, if there's no questions, I'll go to move on. So I already have 0 0.0136 up here. Okay, so I'm going to go to multiply that. Um, by 143000. That's what I get. I'm going to divide that by 2 or multiply it by 0. 0.5. And that's my answer right there. Why did I get a different answer? Oh, because I got uh, rounded. Okay. So uh, my modulus of resistance equals, I forgot the number. Can we just say 970? 970. Okay. Um, cool. Anyone have, anyone have any questions on this one? Oh, it is also uh, it is also PSI, and you get that from working in this problem into here. Yeah, I didn't really show that very well, but it is PSI. It definitely is PSI. All right, if there's no questions, I'll wait a little longer to see if anyone has any questions about how I got these. Remember, all I'm doing is following this formula right here. And look, guys, the, these symbols, they're all, they're all new to us this year. So make sure you have that formula sheet out handy. I have mine printed out because you I don't know if you can tell. I keep looking at it because I keep forgetting what they are. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, moving on to number seven, last problem. So this one is the trickiest one, okay? So it's definitely the one. Um, it's definitely the the longest one, um, and it definitely looks like the most challenging one. But to be honest with you, it kind of you already have all the work for it. There's there's nothing really we need to figure out. I think there's only one thing you need to figure out. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over it. So we're looking for the modulus of toughness. Okay. So uh, U is for modulus, T is for toughness. So here we go. It's one third. Um. One third the normal strain. So you see the formula I'm using right here. Uh, it says it wants the normal strain of BR. What the heck is BR? That's the first time I've seen that in this uh, work. Anyone got what BR is? Bruh. Okay, I know what YP stands for, yield point. Nobody? All right. It stands for breaking point, okay? Where, where it breaks, okay? So you're looking for the, um, <clears throat> the normal strain where it breaks, which is right here, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at that. So if you remember, I did this problem last time. Uh, so remember it's the D. The funny looking D, the delta, over um, the original length. My original length is always going to be 2.95. That's how big the dog bones are. Okay, so now I'm looking for um, the deformation, the total deformation at that point. And it looks like it is 23 and a half, 23.5 millimeters. So I already have the conversion for that. Don't be afraid to use. Um, uh, use Google, but uh, 23.5 millimeters in inches is 0.925169 inches. Okay, and I'm going ahead and divide that by um, 2.95 inches. 
Don't forget to convert it to inches, guys. You have to be able to convert it. 0 0.9251, 969 divided by 2.95. And I get that number right there. So I get my answer for my stress at the breaking point is 0.3136 inches. Okay. All right. So that's what I get for my second bubble right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that right there, 0.3136 inches. And really, that's the only one we're solving for because the rest we already have, okay? Um, so here we go. The second one, the next one is in parentheses, and it's asking me for the stress of the yield point, okay? So does anyone know what the stress of the yield point is? Because I'm pretty sure we did that in the first one. Nope, we didn't do it in the first one. Sorry. We had the force, but not the stress. Okay, so um, the stress is also, you find it in uh, problem number two. And the stress of the yield point was our answer, I believe. And it was 143,000. Uh, 143, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we did. Cool. Uh, yeah, stress of the yield point. Yeah, exactly. Same thing. So stress of the yield point and stress of the yield point. Yep. All right. So uh, we got that number. So now we're going to go ahead. And that was what, by the way, guys? That was PSI, right? Plus. All right. Two. So we're going to multiply this next one by two. So I'm going to put that one in parentheses, too. Uh, two times the stress at the ULT. So stress of ULT, does anyone remember what that means? What problem was that? Let's see, here's the problems from last time. Oh, nope, that's breaking a rupture. Oh, there it is, number three. What does ULT stand for? Yep, so that's when we found the ultimate tensile stress. You can see right here, it had to solve for it. We already have that answer. Here it is right here from number three. So 186,000 PSI. All right, let's go ahead and use that. 186,000 PSI. Okay, so that is it. Right? Yep. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, do some work. Let's go ahead and uh, multiply. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, multiply. Uh, well, I'm going to start from this end, and then I'll go ahead and divide it all by 3. So I got 2 times 186,000 equals that. We're going to add it to 143,000. That's what that equals. I'm going to multiply it by 0.3136. That's my answer right there, and I'm going to divide it by 3. Ladies and gentlemen, my answer is, should we just say 54,000 PSI, round it? Pretty close. 54,000 PSI. Close enough. I just divided by three. Because it's one third is just dividing by three. Yeah, and one third is 0 0.33333. So you could just multiply by that too. It'll work out the same. So let me clear it and you'll see it's the same answer. 0 0.33333, four, uh, no, it's not four. 0 0.3 times 0 0.3136, if you want to go in order, you know? Um, oh no, wait, we have to do this part first, sorry. Uh, 186000 times two plus 14300. That's how much that is, times 0.3136, times 0.3333, and I get the same answer. I just divided by three because one third is just the same as dividing by three. Or I could just assume that this is all on the top and the bottom is three, so then it's just all over three. All right. 
What do you, uh, by the way, guys, uh, PSI, uh, you notice that's all in PSI, but we have an in inches right here. If we did have this, let's say this one third, one third inch, right? Uh, let's say this would all be over uh, that, over inches. That's where these inches would uh, cancel out, and then we'd just be left with PSI.